Today I'm going to show you how I made these USB fast charging modules. They feature 4 ports in total, with each port capable of delivering up to 65 watts. The modules can be powered from any DC source up to 30 volts, and they can be daisy chained via their XT60 input and output to multiply the number of available ports. Inside there are two types of charger modules, Type A and Type C. For assembling all of them, I decided to try a trick I see all the time on YouTube. Look at that, it worked the first time. Okay, I know, but it would be nice if things worked that way, wouldn't it? Anyway, from this point on you will see a time lapse of the tedious process of wiring, soldering, gluing and testing all the modules with me occasionally explaining what I'm doing. First, I'm preparing the wires that will power the PCB modules. I know I'm using wires from an AC power cord, so their cores don't make much sense in a DC system like this. But as long as I'm consistent with which color is positive and which is negative, it should be fine. Thankfully, each PCB has separate pads for soldering the input power instead of relying solely on the DC socket. This is crucial because, as you'll see later, there isn't much room inside the 3D printer closure. The Type-C modules were especially difficult to wire because they are actually two separate modules side by side that have to be connected in parallel. That's why I'm stripping their wires in two separate places and taking extra care not to short them to each other. And remember, I have to do all of this nine times. The next step is to prepare the XT60 connectors for the power input. The difficulty here is their high thermal mass. It takes time to heat them up to soldering temperature, after which it's very easy to overheat them and melt the plastic casing. Also, since these modules are designed to be daisy chained, I have to use thick 12 gauge wire for the pass through connecting the female to the male XT60. Speaking of which, I still can't figure out which one is considered male and which is female. The one that protrudes and goes inside the other has holes for conductors while the other one has pins. Even some suppliers seem to confuse them, as I've seen the same connector label as male and female on Aliexpress. Please tell me in the comments which is which to settle this once and for all. For those worried that I'm not using heat shrink tubing to insulate the wires, I'm going to cover them with hot glue. Since they are intended to always be inside the enclosed casing with the lid closed, there shouldn't be any issues. The next step is to secure the PCB modules inside the 3D printed enclosure. Initially, I considered using 4 screws and nuts for each module, but later I found that to be overkill. The large amount of hot glue I'm using is more than enough to hold them in place. Plus, the space inside the enclosure is so cramped that the modules won't have much room to move, even if they get warm enough during charging to soften the glue. Now, I'm attaching the XT60 connectors, this time using screws and nuts as intended. This ensures that the mechanical load from plugging and unplugging is transferred to the enclosure, not the solder joints. The other XC60 connector attaches to the enclosure from the inside, so I didn't solder the cables to it until now, 
which makes the process a bit more difficult. Of course I didn't forget to add the Type-C modules and the best time to glue them in place was now. Thankfully my printer is precise enough that the holes for the USB connectors are so tight the modules clip into place and align themselves automatically. Now it's time to solder all the positive wires together, as well as the negative ones, starting with the thickest ones. As you've probably guessed by now, I really should get one of those solder pots to thin my wires by just dipping them in for a second, instead of manually using my soldering iron on each one. That would have saved me many hours. You can see here that I connected an external pass-through cable to the XT60 connector. This acts as a heatsink to prevent the connector from melting from the high soldering temperature. Everything would be easier if I used thinner power wires, but I wasn't willing to compromise on that. I wanted to maximize the power my modules can handle. For example, if someone was crazy enough to daisy chain 10 of these modules to charge 40 devices at each port's maximum output, they would pull 1.9 kilowatts of power. At 30 volts, that's 63 amps of current, just over the maximum the XT60 connectors can handle, which is insane. It would be fun to see, though. Unfortunately, I don't have that many devices that can continuously draw that much power. After some careful cable management inside the enclosure, I test each module while closing its lid. Finally, I connect all of them together using these pass-through cables and check to see their LEDs light up, confirming they're working. Using a power measuring USB-C cable, I successfully charge my laptop from the last module in the chain. The cable immediately measures 64 watts, meaning the USB PD 3.1 protocol was initiated with no problems. Check out the links in the description to get one or more of these modules. This way you support my work and help me create more of these gadgets and evolve them further.